Hey guys, Halfway Dead here, with another episode of Rocket Science. This one has been on my bucket list since forever, because we're gonna look at the turning of the cars a little more in detail than we did before. Alright, so what is the data we had so far? It was taken from a very simple experiment. I basically drove all the cars at full speed and did the tightest possible turn and measured the angular velocity. The angular velocity, as the name suggests, tells you how fast the angle changes and therefore how fast the car turns. However, the cars don't instantly turn as fast as they can when you start turning. They need some time to ramp up the angular velocity. This is something that I simplified in my previous tests by turning in a circle for several seconds to measure the maximum angular velocity. I also did this at only two different car speeds. So let's just show how the angular velocity actually behaves when you start turning while at maximum linear velocity. In this graph you can see the time on the x-axis and the angular velocity on the y-axis. First off, something immediately becomes clear. All the car presets are very similar nowadays. They are within 10% margins in all physics ticks and within a 3% margin for their maximum turning speed that they reach after a short time. Looking at some old data collected by Verixi before patch 1.11, there was a margin of 25% for the final turning speed. Back then, I'd say that if you're playing competitively or even for money, a 25% margin is something that you cannot pass out on. That is no longer the case and I don't think any preset should be chosen purely based on turning, but it is still a consideration. How do we make sense of this data? Well, we can plot all presets against the octane turning for each physics tick and show them as percentage of octane's maximum turning speed. Now we can see the difference much more clearly, although you'll have to keep in mind that it's also exaggerated. One thing is quite obvious though. The octane is the tightest turning at the beginning, but the worst at the end. I will call this early advantage the responsiveness. All cars have the same input lag, but the inputs take longer to make the car turn equally fast, which can affect your perception of how responsive the turning feels. I spent way too many hours thinking about how you could compare this in a fair manner and even conducted a survey. It would not be representative to just compare the first physics tick because that has such a small impact on turning that any car that quickly ramps up afterwards would be better for even very short turns. It's kind of arbitrary to choose any other random tick. Rather than that I went with a soft limitation. My new stat works like this. The very first tick makes up 16% of the total result. The remaining ticks make up 84%. Then that 84% will be split into 16% and 84% recursively. That way the first tick has an impact of 16%, the second 13%, the third 11% and so on. 16% was chosen based on the average perception of the people that provided coherent data in the survey. The Octane comes out as the winner by about 2-3% ahead of the Hybrid and Dominus. The rest of the pack is about 6% worse than the Octane. So the Octane has an early advantage. But is there another way to look at this? I have found another graph that's quite useful. The x-axis here shows the number of degrees the Octane has turned and on the y-axis you can see the angle difference in degrees. We can easily see the break-even points of every car. The Dominus does a 25 degree turn in the same time as the Octane. The Breakout and Hybrid are equal to each other at 78 degrees. The Batmobile needs a 107 degree turn to make up for the early Octane advantage. If you're doing over 90 degree turns, you're very likely going to use Power Slide, unless turning fast doesn't matter. While presets like Dominus and Hybrid will be better turners than Octane in many cases, the Batmobile is the worst in basically all these scenarios. If you're wondering why that is, this is related to the turning changes that happened in patch 1.44. Prior to that, the Batmobile was very similar to the Plank preset 
and all cars but the Batmobile had a change that improved their turning to offset some of the physics changes I talked about in my video on patch 1.43. I'm not sure why Sonics didn't want to touch the Batmobile because they already did it in patch 1.39. And if there was a difference in physics that warranted the change, you would expect the car to feel slightly different regardless. Can we compare turning as a single number? We can try. If we say for example the average turn lasts a quarter second and we have a standard deviation of a quarter second. That is pretty short, but usually you would want to use power slide for the big turns, which isn't covered here. With that assumption, we can calculate exactly which car will give you the best result in the majority of situations. In order from best to worst, Dominus, Hybrid, Octane, Breakout, Plank, Batmobile. If you were to increase the estimated mean or standard deviation, the Octane will start to fall behind the Breakout and Plank. All other placements stay relatively the same, unless you choose some extremely high or low estimates. So far, all these stats were based on starting a turn. But something that is also very interesting is what happens when you stop turning. Just like the start, the angular velocity doesn't instantly switch to zero. In fact, we can use the exact same formula we used earlier to calculate responsiveness. Now we have to keep in mind that some cars just don't turn as fast, which gives them an inherent advantage when it comes to reaching a lower speed quickly. To account for that, I just divided all the numbers by the car's maximum turning speed and then took the inverse so the most responsive car has the highest value. You cannot directly compare these values to start responsiveness, but you can compare them to each other. The Octane comes out ahead of the rest by about 3 to 6%. And for once, the Batmobile can edge out a small victory against the Plank. We should also take a look at just how far the cars keep turning after stopping the input. The Octane comes out quite a bit ahead here, turning only 7.7 .7 degrees more. The Breakout turns 22% further if you want to compare it that way. But this is all just assuming that you just let go of your analog stick or keyboard key. You can in fact counter steer just to make sure you don't turn too far. In that case, all the cars will stop turning after 2.5 to 2.9 degrees. There is still a big percentage difference here, but the absolute difference is small. Usually though, you will counter steer when you actually want to change directions. For that case, I can unfortunately not calculate a responsiveness metric, because as I previously said, slowing down and speeding up can't be compared directly with my formula. But we can show another graph that we have kinda seen before. The y-axis plots the angle difference to the octane and the x-axis is the time now. This view shows that the octane now has a much bigger advantage than it had when starting a turn from going straight. Even the most responsive competitors need almost two thirds of a second, or in other words, a 57 degree turn to break even with it. We can also see that the Batmobile is better than the Plank in such turns shorter than one third of a second, which is the only objective data I've found that supports the argument that the Batmobile is better than the Plank preset. One more interesting thing to read from this graph is just how far the breakout falls behind the Octane. 2 degrees. The car's maximum turning speed is pretty close to 1 degree per physics tick. Which means that if you'd want to turn 30 degrees after a switch of direction, you'd have to start turning 8 milliseconds earlier with the breakout just to complete the turn in the same amount of time. Earlier we calculated the best turning cars based on an average quarter second turn. What result do we get with this data? I did adjust this to make the average turn 50 milliseconds longer, because that's how long it takes for most cars to stop turning in the previous direction. The Octane is now the winner by about 2% ahead of the Hybrid, which is closely followed by the Dominus. A further 2.5% to 3% behind are the Plank, Batmobile and Breakout. Have you noticed that I haven't mentioned the linear velocity aka the speed of the car since the beginning of the video? Originally I planned to map out the entire space of turning at all velocities, but this topic is way more complex than I anticipated. 
So I only did the tests at a couple of different velocities and will try to explain the change in behavior. In general, if you're driving the same circle with a higher linear velocity, you will also have a higher angular velocity. That is the behavior we see at low velocities. However, with higher velocities, it starts to get impossible to do that tiny of a turning circle and the car's turning will automatically get wider. For optimal turning, you would want to drive around 850 to 900 Unreal units per second. As you can see, the cars also stay pretty close to each other at all speeds, but their order doesn't stay the same. The Octane only gets better relative to all other cars the lower the speed is. The Breakout and Dominance are relatively worse at lower speeds. This is the behavior of the maximum angular velocity at each speed, which is pretty easy to test. Does that mean the responsiveness is also affected by speed? Not really. I only tested a couple of velocities, but there were only very minor differences in responsiveness that line up perfectly with the general changes. All cars also have their best responsiveness at around 850 to 900 Unreal units per second, and the relative responsiveness of the breakout and dominance gets slightly worse at lower speeds. After this insane amount of data, a summary is needed. How good is each of the presets? Is the Octane the best? Before I discuss this, keep in mind that this doesn't take power sliding into account, which I will have to look at in the future. I wouldn't go quite as far as saying that the Octane is the best, because there are many situations where it isn't. The responsiveness and turning behavior at lower speeds certainly gives it another advantage when dribbling, but in 3v3s, where you're often going full speed, it will be a mixed bag. In those situations, the hybrid and dominance will often perform better. There is a definite trend here though, and that is that Plank, Batmobile and Breakout are the worst in basically all game relevant scenarios. Sorry for the long wait for this video. I had university exams as well as something personal and the analysis of the crazy amount of data took more time than I could have imagined. Shout out to my patrons who make it possible for me to spend this much time on the videos. If you want to become one too, you will get the benefit of getting guaranteed answers to your questions as well as having sneak peek info and a vote on topic prioritization. To stay up to date, follow me on Twitter or join my Discord and I'll see you soon for the next video.